Montana Tech Talk. I am so happy to introduce Dr. Marissa Padula. Uh, Marissa has been on campus of 15 years now, hence 15 years of virus discovery, right, Marissa? Went pretty fast. Yeah, it does. Marissa received her BS in chemistry with a bioscience option from the University of Pittsburgh with coursework, including studies in French and Japanese. Someday we'll have lunch and talk about that French and Japanese. Um, she received her PhD in biology at the University of Pittsburgh in the laboratory of Dr. Graham Hatfield, and her postdoctoral position in Washington State University where she ran the, I'm, I'm going to murder this, Baji Genomics. Close? Page. That's it, yeah. Page. I always, I always pronounce that wrong. So uh, we're proud to have her, her here on campus. She is an absolute uh, fantastic resource for us here and for our educators at the uh, grade school, middle school, and high school. Uh, so please help me welcome Marissa Badula. Well, thanks, Peggy, for the introduction, and thanks for inviting me. Um, I really want to thank everybody who's on. I don't have a list of everyone there, but I'm going to try to figure out how to do that. Um, I appreciate you coming and taking the time for me to tell you about um, 15 years of work at Montana Tech, but mostly this is going to be a, a hello and thank you to all the students and teachers uh, and colleagues that I've worked with over the years, um, which has really enriched my whole professional career. So I've been fortunate to have a, a super family uh, and experiences. Uh, after my time at Pitt, I came to Montana Tech, which is obviously uh, kind of a different institution, uh, but I've had wonderful experiences here. Um, starting uh, before I came in, in 1996, I, I competed for the US in the Centennial Olympic Games in Atlanta, and that's me with much shorter hair. Uh, in the USA patch. Um, since then, I've been blessed with two great kids, Leanna and Kyle, um, and Mike joined us in 2011. And I don't know if you can see the, the beast on the right, but that's Cher, and she gets me out for walks every day, which is probably a really good thing. Um, so I, I think this whole talk is going to really be about other people, particularly my mentors, heroes, and colleagues. Um, my parents and siblings obviously had a super great influence on me. Uh, high school teachers, uh, I can just still remember their lectures to this day and the, the, the thrill I felt for science uh, with Mr. Messenger, um, judo coaches. Um, but a lot of the work that I'm going to talk about here um, was started in collaboration with my PhD advisor, and that's Dr. Graham Hatful, shown on the slide here. Um, he was a, a young... Can I stop you there for a moment? Because uh, Raylin, I see that you're on the call. Can you see her share screen? I can. Okay, you can. I, I evidently can't. So as long as you guys can see it, we're all good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and so a lot of colleagues and students, kind of funny that Raylin was just brought up, so she'll feature in this a little bit later. Um, and, you know, the teachers and students that I've worked with and my colleagues, I consider some of my dearest and most trusted friends. So um, I hope that comes out and that if I miss any single one of you, I, I deeply apologize. Uh, um, but throughout my life, I've been lucky to have all these folks um, because we all need others. And particularly, um, you know, when times are hard, it's just great to have friends to lean on. So. Um, School and jobs. I was supposed to give a talk for the Butte Honors Society last March, uh, and it was titled A Long and Winding Road. So I thought I'd just throw that little phrase in here because that's sort of what I feel like I'm on is a long and winding road. And so I went to high school in Massachusetts, uh, undergrad at the University of Pittsburgh in chemistry. I guess Peggy already read all of this to you. So I joined Montana Tech in 2005. Um, and I, today at my office, I found the title slide of my interview talk from my 8 a.m. 2005 uh, job interview, which was 
I propose that bacteriophage isolation and genomics is a perfect tool for student voyages of exploration. And so you'll get to be the judge to see whether that proposal back in 2005 uh, bore any fruit over the last 15 years. Um, and so this has really been a partnership for research and education. And I hope that some of the partners in this 15 years of work really come up to the forefront in the next half hour or so. Um, and so this is a list of all the students um, whom, with whom I've worked over the last, in my lab. Um, and there are teachers on here who, who took sabbaticals uh, and student teachers who got their master's degree with me. Um, and I hope to come back to this list at the very end, should we have enough time, and highlight a lot of their amazing accomplishments. Um, but I just want to mention Kirk, because he was the very first student. Um, Kirk is pictured down here uh, with the blazer on. And so I had gone around the campus hanging up signs of, are you interested in molecular biology? Do you want a research project? And who shows up at my door with one of these flyers in hand than Kirk Cadell? Um, and there could have been not a more perfect first student because Kirk, as you might guess from his blazer, is extremely particular and organized and wonderful. And his Isuzu Trooper was always washed, even in the middle of winter. And now Kirk is a surgeon in Mississippi. Um, and uh, I'll hopefully tell you some of the stories of many of these other students um, who passed through the lab. Um, I want to thank all the all the phage hunters, my students that were on the last slide, and other virus hunters and colleagues. Uh, Dr. Douglas was the department head when I arrived, and Dr. Kenzie is now the department head of biology, and I think we've all worked together to make a great experience for our students and get them to where they want to go, and, and that's what I take the greatest of pride in. Um, Raylan, uh, that you just saw, Raylan Brandel, um, I've partnered with from 2006, I think, our first Teacher Academy on, um, and I'm thrilled that CFWEP, along with Chris Doyle, who's been our man in the streets in the classroom, uh, I've just been honored to work with them for, for the last more than a decade. And lastly, I, I want to appreciate uh, Dr. Beverly Hartline, who's our research director and dean of the graduate school, who's always offered me encouragement and helped us put our grant proposals through to the National Institutes of Health and encouraged me to take uh, steps forward that I might not have taken in without her encouragement. So thank you, Dr. Hartline. Um, some of these other partners are our Montana K through 12 teachers. And I'll tell you a little bit about Sandy Wardell, who uh, attended a 2005 teacher training in the University of Pittsburgh right before I moved here, and her classroom was the first one I visited in Montana in October of 2005. Uh, for some of you who don't have a lot of background in microbiology, I'll give a little overview of what these phages or bacteriophages are. And I really hope that through my excitement about this whole project um, that I'll convince you that they can enthrall and educate students while producing genuine scientific discoveries, DNA sequences on GenBank and the potential medical application which have come to fruition through Dr. Hatful's work. And then I'll wrap up with uh, the National Student Awards Committee, uh, which is really uh, given me a lot of satisfaction and enrichment in my career to work with some of Montana Tech's top students toward uh, achieving Goldwater and other scholarships. Please let me know if I'm going too fast or if you can't hear me. So I'm happy to slow down or, you know, inter be interrupted. But um, so for basic biology, uh, like viruses that are a little bit in the news for the last year um, are not cells. Viruses are not all pathogens of humans, right? There are all kinds of viruses out there, some that infect plants, some that infect animals, some that infect amoeba, and some that infect bacteria. And those uh, that I'm trying to highlight here with my pointer are called bacteriophages. And those are the focus of all the research that my students and teachers and colleagues and I have worked toward at Montana Tech. 
Some viruses have RNA for their genomes, and some viruses, like most all of the phages that we study, have DNA for their um, information storage. All viruses need a host cell in which to replicate. So these phages all attack bacteria, and the bacteria reproduce more of the phages. So their life cycle is shown here. Um, so a phage lands on a bacterium, injects its genetic material. The bacterial cell is taken over and used as sort of a, a host cell that copies the virus genetic material, does the processes of molecular biology, transcription and translation to build the viral proteins from the instructions of the viral DNA. All right, those proteins assemble into new virus particles called virions. And some of the proteins encoded by the virus cause the bacterium to explode, releasing full-formed progeny viruses out into the environment. And this is a lovely cartoon. Uh, a real electron micrograph of one of the Montana Tech phages is shown here. And this bar represents 100 nanometers. So therefore, um, the scale of those pictures on the left is not accurate at all. Um, this is actually the picture of uh, an electron micrograph of viruses adhering to a bacterial cell. And they recognize proteins on the bacterial surface and attach to them. And they're very specific, right? And so they're also much smaller than the bacterial cell, unlike this cartoon. And you can see uh, even zoomed in here that their tails start to penetrate the bacterial cell wall. What's super amazing about phages, and it's just mind boggling, is the total population size is drawn out here in digits as 10 to the 31, which is one with 31 zeros after it. And that number is, is the beyond our comprehension when you know humans range in the billions and most uh, this makes phages the most numerous biological entities on our entire planet and they outnumber all other biological organisms all cells types uh, animals plants uh, combined but it's this extraordinary number that allows us to search for them and successfully find them and especially in a middle school or high school classroom. And we can't bring an electron microscope that takes images like this into the classroom. So you might wonder, well, how could they then see that they've discovered a virus? And the answer to that is that we bring Petri dishes with bacteria, which is all the white, and the circles represent a phage infection where one phage landed on one bacterium infected it, causing it to explode and release about 100 viruses. That process, those 100 viruses go on to infect 100 more bacteria and go through the same process so that each of these little circles contains about a billion phages. Okay, so what's the medical relevance? Um, I'm sure all of you have heard of antibiotics and antibiotic resistant bacteria, which are also known as superbugs. Right? And so antibiotics are amazing and wonderful and have saved about 100 million lives or more just in the last century. Um, but bacteria evolve resistance to these antibiotics, resulting in serious infections and deaths um, from multi-drug resistant bacteria, such as multi-drug resistant Staph aureus. And these kill about 23,000 Americans every year. Bacteriophages offer a way to kill the bacteria that infect humans. So phage therapy, which is definitely not a new idea, about a hundred year old idea from Felix Durrell, the one of the co-discoverers of bacteriophage, um, definitely not our idea, but a definitely a necessary idea to explore as superbug bacteria are killing 23,000 Americans a year. So they offer potential tools against infectious disease. They've been used in the former Soviet Union um, for about 80 years or more. And back in 2015, right, it was big news that phages, little used for decades in the US and much of Europe, are gaining rec not recognition and attention because of the bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. Well, just in the past few years, phage therapies have borne some very noted successes. Um, 
in successfully saving patients' lives. So Stephanie Strathdy um, wrote the book about the, her experience when her husband, Tom Patterson, these were both scientists from uh, the University of California at San Diego, were traveling and he became infected with a superbug. And they flew to Germany where he kept getting worse and ended up back in San Diego where he, he was dying, his organs were failing. And she sought out phage therapy um, as a last ditch effort and got emergency approval by the FDA and saved her husband's life. And this is the topic of not only this great book, but TED Talks um, and NPR video uh, interviews as well. And so that was, let's see, the, the year of publication, 2017, right? And so just even more recently and closer to home, for me, you might recognize Dr. Graham Hatful in this picture. Um, he's working with um, Dr. Diedrich, who was the physician treating um, a teenage girl in Great Britain who was dying of a drug resistant bacterial infection. Now this bacterium was Mycobacterium abscessus. And the bacteriophages that Dr. Hatful's outreach program which I'll tell you a little bit more about, infect Mycobacterium smegmatis. But he has a collection of thousands and thousands of phages that can infect Mycobacterium smegmatis. So the physician got in touch with Dr. Hetfel to see if they could try to save this teenage girl who was dying of a Mycobacterium abscessus infection. And he went to his collection of phages of which Montana Tech student phages are included and our outreach students phages are included in this collection and he went to the freezer and he tested phages against the exact bacteria that they mailed to her that was from um, the patient. And three phages, Zoe, BPS, and Muddy, were found that could infect the bacterium that was killing her. And they treated her with billions of phages every few hours. And she had been on palliative care. She was, you know, being released to, to die and these phages saved, saved her life. And again, these are uh, now really public stories that are in the news and really have raised the excitement level of the potential for phage therapy. Um, and so Dr. Hatful was really the greatest of mentors and he always sent me out the door to competitions with, good luck, see you when you get back never worrying about a day that I missed out of the lab, right? It was not his concern. I was following my passions and he knew that I would apply those same passions, right, to my research. And I, I hope that I've imbued that same, same philosophy in my students is do what you love and love what you do. And the next thing you know, you're gonna have a really successful outcome. So um, what Dr. Hatful, uh, philosophy and overview of the phage discovery program that, that we developed was that you don't have to be a physicist to ride a bike, right? You just have to get on and start pedaling. You can learn about friction and angles of torque and all how the gears work. You can learn about that as you get interested, but get on and start pedaling. And so this is the same thing I tell the students. You don't have to have a PhD in microbiology to discover a virus. You just have to do these simple steps. We're happy to help you and you get to name it, right? So part of the reason that Dr. Hatful, then later Howard Hughes Medical Institute were interested in providing research experience to students and young college students as well is that people have a weird idea in our society of what a scientist looks like and what we do. And I'm not sure you could tell me or don't tell me which one of these drawings of scientists I look most like the seventh graders drew before they ever met a scientist, right? Like they just don't, the, the public press, the media, everyone kind of shows scientists as, as stereotypical individuals who don't really represent uh, the big collection of scientists that, that go about our work every day. Um, and, and that what we do, I think of weird experiments and bottles of chemicals, right? Um, so what did we do? Well, starting in 2003, I went to a public or to a Catholic high school in Pittsburgh with a hundred students through the first stages of phage discovery. Um, we brought in undergraduate researchers as mentors, that's Kostya from Albania. And then any interested students 
could participate in further down work. We could go back to the schools and visit with the DNA sequences and do some bioinformatics, right? And so that was 2003 in Pittsburgh. And that program went completely, excuse the pun, viral. Um, Howard Hughes Medical Institute adopted Dr. Hatful's program that I developed with him called CFAGES, which is Science Education Alliances. And they've also built a database to collect all the information of all the phages that have been collected from these outreach visits and in colleges where the CFAGES program is now in over a hundred colleges across the country, across the world, including Montana Tech. Um, there have been over 18,000 phages discovered. This was captured on uh, the 4th of November when Peggy and I started talking about uh, this, this talk and about 3,500 complete phage DNA sequences have been determined. Um, so basically freshmen in college, first year students, go through the process of viral discovery. Um, a subsequent class allows them to look at the DNA. And it turns out that this is pretty exciting for students and helps maintain uh, persistence in scientific majors and then eventually into scientific careers. So in 2005, I joined Montana Tech. And I told you that Sandy Wardell was one of the first, was the first teacher uh, that we visited in Montana. And she had been in Pittsburgh and I communicated with her and she invited me to Helena High School in October of 2005. And so I drove in the dark in winding roads with ice that I'd never been on in October of 2005 to visit um, Ms. Wardell's classrooms. And uh, it, they're pictured here and it was just a fabulous experience. Um, that has blossomed into over 11,000 students participating uh, across the state. Um, Sandy introduced me to Megan Lane and Kate attended one of Ray Lynn uh, and CFWEP's first academies. And so these were the teachers in whose classrooms I first uh, became invited and involved. And I will always be grateful that they welcomed me into their classroom and gave me the foundation um, and the preliminary data to apply for to expand the program. And so after months of uh, writing grants with Ray Lynn, Gloria Carter, Dr. Alvarado and others, uh, we were awarded uh, a NIH SEPA award, Science Education Partnership, uh, a five-year award for about $1.2 million to travel uh, for five years to 28 teachers signed up originally and about 8,000 other students. And so these are those teachers and the schools uh, from where they arrived and, and in applied. These, these teachers were the go-getters who heard about this program from different listservs and joined up with us. And if you take a peek at this map, you can see that they bridged from Libby all the way over to Baker. And so Chris Doyle, whom I showed on one of the first slides, has personally driven over 30,000 miles in these five years to visit the teachers for three-day visits. Um, yeah, it's just a fantastic group uh, who, who worked with us. The teachers did summer trainings, their own independent research projects, um, and it was just a, a fabulous group. Together uh, with those original teachers, we had over 115 newly isolated phages that are added to the database. Um, and they have great names because the students name them, right? Ridgerick uh, was for the East Ridge and, and Fogues was for Miss Fogarty, discovered by a student named Mr. Fogarty and just Brutal Panda 17. Like these are just great unique names and that's scientifically fine because the phages are all unique in their DNA sequence, okay? So they have their own genes that the makeup that is not exactly like any other phages. Um, and so these were the phages just in the first couple years. These were more recent ones from the BRIC program. Uh, and so the process is to isolate new phages where I go in for a day and tell them about the process. They collect samples, um, test for phages on the bacteria that we provide and get to name them. Later, these are perfect, I would argue, vessels for undergraduate student exploration who get to do a lot of work independently in the labs at Montana Tech uh, to isolate the DNA from the individual phages, pit 
through the HHMI program, sequences the entire genomes of the phages and sends it back to us. And students projects can also include annotating the genome. And I'm sure some of the people that are on this call have participated in, in these. Um, and publish their findings on GenBank, right? So these phages that the students have discovered, the students have annotated, those sequences are available to the entire scientific community on the public database called GenBank. I'll just tell you about a couple phages and a few students that have uh, done some great work. And one is Gay JP. It was isolated by a middle school student years ago, Maddie Roll, and then adopted by Atticus Proctor um, at when I was on sabbatical last, I worked with Sawyer Linky, who, who worked with Atticus. Caitlin Shalinsky uh, is here. And they worked together to discover uh, not only the DNA sequence shown here, right? So these, if you zoom in, you can see these are A's, T's, C's, and G's. And these are the what the DNA of gauge contain. It's one long stretch of DNA that starts up here. I'll have to zoom in more. A C, I think that ends in TAA down at the very bottom. So these bases are what makes up the gauge genome. Okay, that doesn't mean much to anybody, right? They're just a bunch of letters and googly gook, right? But the process of gene annotation that those four high school students did on their um, in their spring, uh, found all the genes using computers, right, to compare to everything else out there. Again, this would be in one long line if it could fit on the screen, but these are the, the 50,000 plus base pairs, and then looks like 92 genes were identified, right? And this phage is on GenBank now with those students as authors. Uh, another pair of students, Hannah and Grace, uh, discovered H. Savage, took its electron micrograph, has extremely long tail. You can notice this, they then got the DNA out and got, it was sequenced and they annotated the genome. They won all kinds of awards at the state and international science fairs. Um, so these students got a real genuine research experience while still in high school. And of course, because the National Institutes of Health is interested in the outcomes, we partner with Education Northwest to survey our students and our teachers about the outcomes. And so the teachers in the BRIC program had uh, increases in self-efficacy, both conducting and research, mentoring research, their phage-specific knowledge, and student dispositions towards science. And manuscripts describing these findings are in the work. Um, there was a video put together that I thought might kind of capture some of the student and teacher excitement um, that I hope to share with you. Um, so Peggy's going to share this video. It's about five minutes with you and features some of those great teachers and some of the middle school students, um, as well as my colleagues um, and other teachers and students, particularly Hannah Sparks, uh, Ray Lynn's in here, Chris Doyle's in here, Megan Lane. Julie Ladd, uh, and Carolyn Bullock. I like science because you get to use your hands and you get to find like stuff that you've never done before and experiment. Science is interesting because you can, in some aspects, you can like help the world and make the world a better place. I, mean, I think science is very cool because um, you always have the chance to like discover new things. When you're thinking about science literacy and what it means to be a scientifically literate person, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to do science or become a scientist as you grow up, but rather it's being able to take in information, look at the quality of that information, understand how science is conducted, understand who's a credible scientist and who isn't, be able to discern between what's on social media and what's, you know, in publications and peer-reviewed publications. And so I believe that the BRIC project definitely helps students understand that the nature of science is long-term study, 
we have peers that are looking at what we do and there's a set rigorous standard that we are meeting when we do our science. What's your favorite thing from modern science and engineering? Work is a five year NIH funded SEPA grant science education partnership award and the acronym stands for bringing research into the classroom. We provide three days of science outreach to thousands and thousands of students across Montana. It is incredible to have the Montana Tech team here in my classroom. It's really a once in a lifetime experience for a lot of these kids and I really believe that it excites them in a way that I would never be able to do without that partnership. Okay. Coming to Helen since 2005 to do phage discovery. Phages are, are everywhere and we're looking for these to find bacteria. So we're having problems with bacteria that are becoming resistant to antibiotics. And so these phages offer us a new way to potentially fight against them. If we could potentially find a phage that would infect them, it could help stop the spread of some of these diseases and it could help cure people from that bacteria. And so the first day I come in and I provide them tubes to collect real samples that they go and collect. We all uh, brought samples from like around town, like from like dirt or snow or water that's outside. And I got mine from just outside of the school. I just got it from snow at my house. I got mine from my front yard. On the second and third day, all the supplies to discover fishes are brought into the classroom. Petri dishes and micropipetters and pipettes and bacteria that they need to test their sample for a virus. We are testing out to see if we can find a virus that will maybe kill TB because like, we have like a close relative to it. So we're testing it on that and maybe if it works on that, it might work TB. They get to filter their sample through a very, very small cord filter to separate the bacteria from the viruses. And the students hands-on do each of these steps after having them demonstrated for them. I've never done anything like this. I think it's really cool that we have this opportunity. Just seeing that spark is really exciting. And I try to capitalize that when I talk to students. I try to capitalize on that excitement about it because that's the first push you want to get kids more excited. After the second day, those petri dishes go into the incubator, and on day three, they come back to test any possible circles on their petri dish, plaques or death zones, for the verifying that they can kill fresh bacteria. When students discover a phage, it's new to science. And when you tell a student that, that's mind blowing, right? Like that's like explorers, and I mean, we don't often have the opportunity in our world to discover something brand new. And when you discover a phage in your sample, it is brand new science. They get to name that page, it becomes a scientific name, their name gets entered as the discoverer. Um, that is super cool. The whole experience with Dr. Bu and Phages has really opened up the door to me, and it's made me a lot more interested in medical sciences and the potential of innovations that could change the world. Leading kids to the um, pipeline is really difficult if you don't know how to do the research yourself. And so we started partnering with teachers across the state um, to do um, professional development and really learning how to do authentic research. My teachers got paid to go to Butte and spend a week doing actual research and lab work that it had been years since I had been in a situation like that. I think by me explaining about the research I've been doing, by seeing scientists around that the kids are getting ideas that they can do science in high school and do research in, in high school, which is, I think, a, a huge benefit too. The team of, of dedicated people working toward the common goal of discovery is, is very powerful. And citizen science is, is a great way to engage a large number of students and find meaningful, genuine discoveries
have a unique opportunity in Bosch Sunnyvale where we have the ecosystem. Of Sorry about that. It's okay. Can I, can everybody see my slide? I can, Marisa. Okay, super. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed revisiting some of those minutes. Um, and so the BRIC uh, program wrapped up in, in 2019 and we brought on a new project, another NIH SEPA award called Phages, really cleverly named Phages Helping Acquire Genuine Experiences in Science. Um, and the goal of this is sustainability and to train teachers to work together for independent phage discovery in schools, right? To have them establish laboratories in their high schools where they can generate all the materials needed to, and the knowledge and the experience to independently run this in the classrooms. Um, obviously that we contain, continued our intensive summer research academies and paired it down to six uh, former BRIC teachers or uh, colleagues, six new mentee teachers from their students. And the idea is that if every one of those hundred colleges faculty took on one school across the country, that we could have thousands and thousands and thousands of students across the country doing this. We're aiming to provide a model for the faculty in the hundred CFAGES colleges um, to be brave and go reach out to those teachers because, you know, until you meet them, you know, they could be intimidating perhaps, who knows, right? And so that 2019 is another five-year award, uh, $1.3 million, um, including uh, Kate Mattern, who was our teacher liaison and one of the early teachers who brought me into Anaconda High School. Um, and she now is a teacher leader partnering uh, with Jeff Draper. So these dozen participants uh, are gonna be working with us over the next three and a half years to finish up uh, them becoming independent and preparing all the materials and delivering it to thousands of students. So here's where they are, all the way from Baker over to Anaconda, um, including a pair of Macaulay teachers in um, Boulder. We had the idea that if SEPA wants science education partnership, wants to influence the pipeline, that we should probably help them build a pipeline between these middle and high school students and college ex experiences. And so Montana Embry is located in many institutions around the state and housed at Montana State University. And we partnered with them piloting in 2018, having students who participated in the SEPA phage discovery have a summer full of research at one of the Embry institutions, especially Montana Tech. And so those four students from 2018 worked out super. And then in 2019, we had four students, Emily, Cassie, Henry, and Grace as part of the Phages program. And this past summer, Kylie and Jaden. And uh, here's their poster session last summer uh, and Kate Mattern, the teacher that I told you introduced us to Anaconda Schools. Future directions for the Phages program are to continue these uh, programs to develop the sustainable and independent delivery, to look at the DNA sequence of these phages and compare them to one another, and really exciting for students and me uh, to look at phages of ecologically and economically important bacteria, Flavobacterium psychrophilium infects cold water trout and kills about half the trout when it breaks out in the, in the fisheries at Washoe. And so if we can find phages that will kill this bacterium, perhaps we can prevent some of these bacterial outbreaks of cold water disease that kill the trout. Um, I think from 15 years that I, I really believe that students can do meaningful research in their classrooms and our evidence for this are the phages they've discovered and the phage DNA sequences that have been uploaded to GenBank for the entire world. These phages would have never been discovered without the students going and digging in the dirt and their teachers allowing us in their classrooms for three days out of each year. Um, we've developed SEPA and Embry pro programs to foster a pipeline from high school to undergraduate researchers and hopefully keep the excitement of genuine research uh, in a full-time experience for students who might not have otherwise had that opportunity. And for financial reasons, we can support them rather so that they in the summer can do research uh, in between college semesters. Whether or not we've had 
you know, an impact on the students is, is being tested through our, our um, evaluation. And I think that they've shown great increases in knowledge of phage disposition towards science, interaction with family members. Um, but the seventh graders decide, uh, after, describe their visit after they visited a scientist, anyone can be a scientist. Maybe I can be a scientist. And even those who don't wanna be a scientist can at least appreciate all the exciting work that scientists are doing across the country to provide knowledge and potential health applications. Um, I still have to, to tell you a little bit about the Mon uh, National Student Award Committee, but for the phage discovery, uh, a special thanks to the biology department. Uh, my colleagues there have been great. I've really appreciated Dr. Douglas when I got there, letting me go and do these visits, never worrying about, you know, why I wasn't there on a Thursday afternoon. He found out I was at East Middle School. Um, so my colleagues at CFWEP, Raylan and Chris particularly, um, have just been fantastic uh, in terms of motivation and organization and, and helping encourage each other and work with these teachers and students. They've just been an inspiration to me. Um, Montana Embry funded my first five years at Montana Tech and got me connected um, with the idea that there's a SEPA program out there and Dr. Tony Beck and the SEPA program have supported us uh, for the last seven years. Couldn't have done any of this without my training at the University of Pittsburgh, particularly my mentorship by Dr. Graham Hatful and the DNA sequencing techniques and bioinformatics analysis I learned as, as a postdoc at the Bacteriophage Institute. Um, Howard Hughes has adopted this and spread it to 100 colleges. Um, but none of this would have been possible without our teachers in Montana and their students who jumped in, scooped up some dirt and did a three-day experiment with us, right? Um, it's just been my honor to do that. And the last uh, topic that I have for you is the National Student Awards Committee. From 2006 on, when our former chancellor, the late Dr. Frank Gilmore approached me to try to help students apply for Goldwater scholarships. And in those 15-ish years, we've uh, supported many student applications, six of whom have been awarded Goldwater scholarships. And these are enormously prestigious national scholarships. These students are lifelong Goldwater scholars. They will forever be lifelong Goldwater scholars and go off to do great future research uh, in their professional careers. It's sort of a, a, a leap, leaping stone for them. We've had five honorable mentions. Two students interviewed for the Rhodes Scholarship, which are finalists for the Rhodes Scholarship, one of the most prestigious collegiate scholarship uh, on, the, on the planet. Um, three Leroy Walker champions of character and Katie Tabaracci here receiving the Montana Athletes and Service Award. And over the last 14 years, it's been a terrific crew of faculty, staff, just my colleagues who work for months on end to support these student applications. Um, it takes a severe dedication and, and reading and meeting and meeting and reading and talking uh, to bring these students to the point where their applications are, are just robust and, and we're so proud of the students and I'm so happy to have worked with these great folks over the last 14 years. Yeah, I think I've thanked all, all of these guys already. They've just been the greatest. We've had great evaluation. Uh, Dr. Jim Driver has helped us take most of our transmission electron microscope uh, images. And depending on time, I can just give you one minute rundown of all of several of these students. Kirk, I told you about, he's a surgeon. Andrew's a PhD scientist. Christine was a vet tech, Matt Nottingham was an optometrist, Eddie became a physician assistant, Curtis became a pharmacist. Uh, Robert Lester worked with me from the time he was 10 till he was 18 and he now holds several college degrees. Dr. Jason Park got his PhD at Texas A&M. Dr. Corey Sonneman uh, is now a psychiatrist practicing in the area. Jonna Laslovich now is a ortho orthodontist. Kim Jenkins is a PhD audiologist at Walter Reed. Uh, Carla's a pharmacist, Rachel's a teacher. Kate, I told you about, she's pictured behind the words here, uh, a super colleague um, who got her master's degree here. 
uh, was our teacher liaison through the BRIC program and now a teacher leader in the phages program. Austin got his master's degree with me and is a fish, wildlife and park ranger. Uh, he actually was getting our tags organized for us when, when we showed up at the Smith River. So he was a, a FWP uh, ranger at the Smith River. Kelsey Amundsen went to dental school. Tyler Hilton went to uh, graduate studies at Tech at Baylor. Um, let's see, so many of these folks. Ryan Hensley was uh, an honorable mention for the Goldwater and um, Shannon went to pharmacy school, Ryan went to Lawrence Livermore National Labs, and then to Virginia Tech for a PhD program. Um, Adam went to medical school at Creighton. These were the, the high school students when I was on sabbatical seven years ago. I told you about Katie's, went to PA school. She won the Champions of Character Award. Uh, Mar Margo pictured over here went to dental school. Chloe went to PA school, Luke is in DO school, Hannah um, just graduated with her master's and is now a research scientist at a biomedical research firm. And let's see, Abby just graduated this, this fall uh, and annotated the a bacteriophage genome as well as discovering a phage. And Kylie is currently an undergrad working with us uh, in the phages program to prepare materials and further work on the phages that have been discovered. So I've just been thrilled to work with all these amazing folks. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you for all that information and everything you do. We are going to open it up for questions. Um, if you do have a question for Marissa, uh, please feel free to unmute and ask the question or you can type it in the chat and I'll relay the information to uh, Marissa for your answer. Hey, Marissa, great talk. Very interesting. Thank you so much. It's amazing what you've accomplished. I was curious if you, if you, I mean, those are very remarkable graduates, but with respect to the high school and middle school students, two, two things. Clearly, a lot of them have gone on. Do you have any idea what either percentage or numbers have gone on to become scientists or engineers or medical doctors and the like? Uh, and also how many have continued to come and come to tech? Because I know there are a number of students who've gone from your high schools to tech who might not have done that if you hadn't had the partnerships with their schools and Chris and you and all been in their schools working with them from the time they were 12 or something. Well, well thanks, Bev. Uh, thanks for the question too. We don't have the uh, data from the schools, like that's protected data that we have to get access to and this, we're, that's something that we've been very curious about we have added questions to our surveys of the students are you you know have you thought about college have you thought about montana tech both before and after for this new phages grant so those data will be forthcoming for the students who are participating in the phages grant um certainly anecdotally i can name handfuls of students who have gone to tech um, most of them probably wouldn't be off to professional school yet. Those are more the undergrad students that I've worked with that I was naming um, in terms of those who have gone off to professional school or PhD programs. Those were mainly Montana Tech students. Uh, only a couple of them had been BRIC or uh, done outreach before the BRIC grant was awarded. So, the, but uh, what, but what, and I know your teachers, many of the teachers you've worked with, I mean, I don't know if that number is now 28 or 48 or whatever, but several of those have gone on to get PhDs, to get other degrees, to um, masters, whatever. And I'd be interested to hear from you, like what that percentage is there. And I know they've gone on to become teacher leaders in their communities. Yeah, we've had teachers honored with the teacher of the year, both at the state level, um, at the national level, 
uh, master's degrees for at least two, ones, two are pursuing PhDs in education. Um, they're just the, the cream of the crop, you know, and that they seek out opportunities and, and hopefully then light that spark in their colleagues. So this teacher partner program with the phages is really designed to kind of spread that enthusiasm of phages beyond even our 28 brick teachers to now uh, six new teacher mentees who, who hopefully will be very independent within four or five years of running this on their own. Are they working with other teachers near nearby in the sort of their corner of the state? Typically the same class, same building even, uh, you know, that they're in the same department. Um, a couple of the teachers have done some outreach visits like to the school for the deaf um, and worked with students there. Um, so the phages program, the six teachers who had been involved in BRIC are working with six new teachers um, and working with them on a weekly basis to read, discuss, and then work in the laboratories. So it's sort of like a virus, it's kind of growing. Uh, that's, that's what we're trying, we're trying hard. And I think the teachers uh, are really the catalysts, so they, they help uh, by their enthusiasm. So thanks, Marissa, great work. Okay. I have a, this is Stella. Do I, can I pipe in with a question? Just put that sure. um, fantastic talk. I mean, one of the things I really love about hearing you, hearing these talks is that um, in the 10 and a half years we've worked together, I've just learned so much about um, the work that you do. And I think a lot of that's credit to, to the way in which you deliver it in these. Um, but I'm curious, do you have any plans to take it um, to expand out of the state, like reach into Idaho or Wyoming or, uh, you know, particularly like the really rural areas that may not have access to good science? Oh, well, some of our towns don't even have an MD in their town or never a scientist or college or even a community college. So sure. And we've also been looking at some towns in Wyoming that Chris has made some contacts with. Uh, Chris Doyle has reached out with those. Um, I think that's kind of the natural next step. But what I'm interested in is making this successful and then going to the CFAGES where there's a hundred faculty and inviting them to, to step up and go to a high school in their community, even just one, and meet a teacher and see if they can try it out and see how, how that goes, you know, and that would really uh, exponentially grow um, from our, you know, 40 teachers and 11,000 students that could do that in a year, maybe, you know. That's exciting. Well, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Marissa? I did see a question in the chat sure. uh, from Robert uh, asking if the presentation will be available for viewing after the fact. Uh, it is being recorded. And I'll get it on Montana Tech YouTube by next week. Uh, will you send out the link for that? I will. Thank you. That's really appreciated. Yeah, I will. Maybe I can make my parents proud of me. I'll be proud if I figure out how to edit it and get it out on YouTube. We believe in you, Peggy. We know. You managed this quite well, so good job. Oh my God. Thank, well, you thank you for having you. us. Thanks for doing this in a COVID era when we, it's nice to at least make some contacts with each other. Uh, from Sandy Wardell, glad to hear Phage Discovery is going strong in the high schools in Montana. Well, she, she was the one who started it all by inviting me to Helena High in 2005. So thank you, Sandy. Hope retirement's going wonderfully. <laughs> All right, if there are no other questions, we will go ahead and close the meeting. Thank you for attending this edition of Montana Tech Talk. Our next edition will be in January 20th. Our guest will be Sarah Raymond from Montana Tech Career Services. And she will be speaking about navigating a job search in this current economy that we have. So information will be posted on the calendar on Montana Tech's website. 
And thank you all for joining us. And I hope to see you again soon. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs>